Welcome back to Star Wars The Bad Batch on TV Podcast Industries. We're back with the second season of The Bad Batch, Episode 1, Spoils of War. Aren't clones supposed to look alike? So much for quality control. This one's too big. This one's too small. This one's got a face tattoo. <laughs> They're real subtle. Uh, hey now. Got a name, brown eyes? Tech. However, the phenotypic eye color for all clones is brown. Iris pigmentation was not affected by well, our Well, as mutation. fascinating as this has been, I have places to be. Welcome back, Batchers. This is TV Podcast Industries. We're back with the second season of Star Wars The Bad Batch. Our first show of the new year. Could it be any earlier in the new year? <laughs> we are back with episode one, Spoils of War. I'm one of your hosts, Derek. Hello there, fellow Batches. I'm one of your other hosts, John. And rounding out this trio of bad clones, I am Chris. We, we'd be good clones, wouldn't we? Well, we'd all be the same, I suppose. Yeah. If we were clones. Depends how Well, we already works. are. I'm just kind of, the, 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 there's, there's only slight differences. Today, I have a, a beard and no glasses. Mm-hmm. You guys have glasses, but no beard. Yep. It's kind of like that old game of guess who. Yes. It's just, <laughs> <laughs> how much gray hair do they have? Okay, well, that's that one. Turn that down. Do they have glasses today? No, turn that one down. Do they <laughs> enjoy, enjoy yeah. Star Wars? All of them go down. Mm-hmm. There you go. I like it. I like it, Chris. I like it. Uh, yes. Nice to be back with uh, our group of, uh, of the Clone Force 99 again for another season. Um, an interesting point to uh, to kick off their show, though, because it's following the best Star Wars content that's ever been out there with Andor, right? This is the first Star Wars show coming out after Andor. Um, luckily, I don't think they're going to be uh, expected to follow up on it. But there are signs, since it's set in the same period, there are signs they've taken on board some of the things that were talked about within Andor. The start of the rebellion, the, uh, the uh, empire growing in power, you know, uh, those things they will touch on in this season. So uh, kind of an interesting place to, to have uh, a cartoon follow up to Clone Wars, basically. Yeah. Do you remember uh, last season, like one of the most interesting parts for me was, and I remember calling it out in the podcast, was that... Um, they started talking about the change over to the galactic credit credits, yeah. mm-hmm. and it was uh, for and I was like, "Oh wow, like that's something that we've never seen yeah. in previous." Like it was the very much okay. Yes, we've heard the 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 trade unions discussions and the trade federation discussions, and mm-hmm. we had galactic kind of peace treaties, and we had those some of those boring scenes. But this is more interesting. This was like yeah. okay when you get into the minutia. And a lot of the minutia now is in Andor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. And it's now, I think the one of the interesting things, I'd love to say they took on board, but this was probably written well before and started animating well before Andor kind of Absolutely. really got in. But it looks like they are now, they figured out their tonal shift mm-hmm. on what is Bad Batch and are moving into somewhat darker... Like shades of grey, further yeah. shades of grey. Exactly. Uh, exactly. Well, yeah. that's it. It's like you said, with the, the that whole thing in Sid's bar where sh- she talks about Empire closing in, yeah. you know? And yeah, I thought it was pretty sort of clear that the Empire's sort of tentacles are spreading through the galaxy. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I think it's about time we should get into some spoiler-filled discussion about uh, The Bad Batch Season 2, Episode 1, Spoils of War. So make sure you watch the episode uh, before continuing on. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to the podcast, if you're new to the podcast because of Star Wars Bad Batch, make sure you pop on over to our website at tvpodcastindustries.com where you can subscribe to at the podcast on any podcast uh, player of your choice. Uh, you can also email us in feedback. You can email us to feedback at tvpodcastindustries.com uh, or you can join us over in our Facebook group where we have a spoiler post up there for every episode of every show that we're covering. Uh, you can find that on facebook.com slash groups slash tvpodcastindustries and uh, we'll let you in there. Yeah, absolutely. Good stuff. Derek, what are some of the episode details for this first episode of the second season of Bad Batch, Spoils of War. Well, the executive producers of this show are Dave Filoni and Jennifer Corbett. Uh, this episode was written by Jennifer Corbett, an uh, episode directed by Stuart Lee, and the story editor for the show is Matt Menkthevets. Um Stuart Lee, interestingly, was 
uh, a director on Clone Wars and on Bad Batch last season. This is the sixth episode of the show that he's directed. And uh, Matt McNamitz, uh, if we didn't mention it last season, I'm not sure if we did or not, but he's the writer on the excellent Star Wars game uh, Jedi Fallen Order. So uh, a, a great writer, really. Uh, and he's the story editor for this show. Good stuff. Excellent. Yeah. And we have the sequel of that game coming out this year. Yes, yes. we do. Can't Can wait. Be good. Can't wait. Looks really awesome. good. Looks awesome. Yeah. John, do you want to tell us what they gave us with your synopsis for the first episode of the second season of The Bad Batch Spoils of War? Sure. The Bad Batch narrowly escape from a mission on the Vonden carnivorous crab infested planet of Zavalox and return to Sid on Ord Mantel. There they meet the pirate Fee, who has just provided intel on a big score on Count Dooku's home planet of Sereno. Sid convinces the reluctant hunter that this could be the score they need for the Bad Batch to be truly free. On the way to Sereno, Echo challenges Hunter on his unwillingness to approach Empire-controlled planets. Omega overhears Echo telling Hunter that saving her from Kamino means their lives will never be safe, but this score should provide the resources to save many, many more. On Sereno, the team encounters a battalion of clone troopers who have already taken two-thirds of Count Dooku's sizable war chest. While Echo, Tech, and Omega get trapped inside a transport container in flight, Wrecker and Hunter are pinned down by the troopers in Dooku's former palace. Hunter discovers a way out of the palace and Omega realises the container will launch re-entry thrusters if it's dropped from the sky. But as they hurtle towards the planet, the thrusters haven't engaged. And the way that we cover the Bad Batch on our podcast is that we talk about our major blaster points for the episode. So let's kick off with blaster point one. Yes, crab is for dinner, mm. everyone. Uh, when uh, the mission to Zav Alox uh, by the Bad Batch, where I think we saw it in the trailer with yep. them being chased down by these carnivorous, uh, fairly crabby crabs. Mm -hmm. um, Seemingly, they can open chests with their big pincers um, uh, as Rekka is running along the beach uh, with some form of loot or intel for Sid. Yeah, um, I have a feeling they could probably open armor with those pincers uh, and, and <laughs> chests. But the way I kind of felt it was probably that this chest had fallen and they were kind of guarding it or they people couldn't get through. So it took a group like the Bad Batch to fight their way through and get out of there with the chest. I think it was one of yeah. those kind of find the treasure and take it off the, off the planet. Uh, I wasn't expecting this to be the opening scene of the episode. You're right. We did see this in the trailer, but because of the kind of action packed opening uh, moments of, uh, of it, I was expecting this to be some, a mission later on in the season, but it's it's drop you right into the, to the action with the Bad Batch again. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. I think as well, just, Cool and funny. The so. pure animation of it, that opening with the kind of tropical beachscape, mm -hmm. um, certainly with it being winter at the moment, I, I kind of got quite warm and sort of felt the need to be on a plane heading towards the beach, <laughs> you know, minus the carnivorous crabs, of course. Of course. Um, for a bit of, bit of sunbathing. Yeah. Um, it, I just thought the animation, it was just really beautiful, yep. just how it was rendered, uh, down. So yeah, really, um, yeah, it's just kind of a, an action opener, which is kind of what the Bad Batch is about with their yeah. missions. So, you know, certainly for, for Sid. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, for me, I absolutely, loved the look the feel i like you i was shocked that it was going this was exactly what we had seen in the trailer yep. i i opened it going oh wait hold on have i <laughs> did i actually click on the trailer wrong is this kind of previously on um although we've never seen it right the animation the we've just i previously had watched um avatar the way of the water and you're starting to see Water was always a tricky thing for animation and CGI mm. and yeah. all that. And now I'm just looking at, a, at that video games, like The Witcher Ultimate, uh, which now has like 4K textures and mm. ray tracing and all those fun things that make no sense to most people. It <laughs> all just me. looks spectacular. Uh -huh. And then you get the fun old school kind of bad batch camaraderie with Omega starting to show some form of, um, I don't know, like growth. Yeah. If we kind of we we see we had we had previously talked about how she is kind of 
growing further and further in in the last season uh, with her bow and getting the helmet. And like, it was the, how can we get her to become more a function member of the actual team? And here we have her fishing, which crab fishing, Mm -hmm. she with a spaceship. Because you know, yeah, of course, um, and then also just learning about every fr- uh, ship class mm-hmm. and every type of ship in the world. Of course, that will come in useful. Of course, it will later in the exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I enjoyed this. It was a fun opening, yeah. and it was it kind of again was just a maybe people are joining the show for the first time. They they don't want to jump in on season one. They're just going to come straight in on season two. Mm-hmm. That's fine. This kind of gives you a a brief reminder of who these people are, their kind of individual mm-hmm. strengths, weaknesses, that type of thing. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. We have that very clearly pointed out uh, by one of our new characters, Fee, uh, who's, who meets the Bad Batch for the first time and uh, lists out all their individual traits that make them different, <laughs> even though they all should look exactly the same. Uh, you've got brown eyes, you've got uh, you've got a, a tattoo on your face, you know, so uh, pointing out that each one, one of them are different. But uh, but I did enjoy this with uh, with Omega um, being more active as a character here. She's uh, definitely helping. She's she's um, jumping into the fight uh, straight off. She was very talented yeah. with that bow by the end of uh, of the first season and now second season you can tell this is now um it's almost like her right arm she's uh she's able to use it very very well yeah um, i mean she's got her skills there for the in in combat for mm-hmm. sure i mean she's hanging off a a sort of toggle rope yeah. on a spacecraft that is flying so you know she's going into the fight mm-hmm. to sort of stop the the carnivorous crabs from sort of attacking the ship yeah. taking them off that so like she is really integrated into the Bad Batch from that combat uh, standpoint. I just like that slight contrast with having to do the, um, you know, nerdy stuff of learning and memorizing all the the ship classes um, of the Empire, uh, which is, you know, got to have good fundamentals. Absolutely. And I think we can tell um, she's picking up lots of traits from her her various dads as well. (laughs) She's got the bravery of of, uh, of hunters. She's got the attacking and jump in uh, abilities of Wrecker as well. She's like really willing to jump into the fight and really enjoying it as well. You know, you hear her after they escape from uh, Zav Alox, you hear her saying, but it was fun, wasn't it? You know, uh, which is not really Hunter's uh, side of things. She's got the, the knowledge of tech and and, uh, and the instruction from, from Echo, of course, in, in her learning. So, uh, so yeah, so we, we have seen her, you know, being becoming her own person from her dad's basically yeah. so i like that i like that as well uh let's move on to our blaster point number two unless anybody has anything else about uh, the mission to zav alox to mention. no blast away <laughs> you love it i do Excellent, excellent. Uh, yeah, we're off to uh, Serano for our second mission. Let's. Uh, we have our return uh, to uh, to Sid, of course, uh, who's been giving their missions. Uh, we had a lot of a lot of fear for Sid last season that she'd uh, that she'd disappear or she'd die or something uh, last season. But this is still their base uh, place that they always go back to um, to get all of their missions in order to tell. So uh, still as grumpy as ever. Um, Annoyed that the uh, that the batch took so long to do this uh, to do this last mission uh, for her, but we get to meet Fee the pirate, um, who we find out has some more intelligence. So, as we mentioned earlier on, this is taking place in the period after Order sixty six and after uh, the death of Count Dooku. So we hear Count Dooku has left behind a massive war chest because he had a big castle and has uh, and had lots of uh, lots of riches. Um, he certainly had a yeah. massive war chest. Um, mm-hmm. like those, the, the you know, the, those big sort of intergalactic transport ships. Mm-hmm. I mean, they were pretty massive they were and yeah. with a lot of containers filled with Dooku's war chest effectively yeah. so it was massive i, I think um, I, love when, I love when they randomly walk into one of them and there's enough riches to to take care of them for the rest of their lives basically <laughs> in just one random war chest you know what if they walked into the one that was that contained like tons and tons of uh of those uh of those boxes of uh of jewels and gems yeah exactly you know? um i mean interestingly with this um I there were two things. One mm-hmm. certainly uh, don't mess with the empire. I mean, given Count Dooku's death, 
then you know we we see that his his um Serrano, the, the, the city below his kind of citadel mm-hmm. has been wiped off, uh, yeah. by orbital bombing. Yeah. Um, so, yep, yeah, the, the emperor was certainly making sure that nothing got out about his identity at that mm-hmm. point. Um, so it's, it's all pretty well destroyed. Um, effectively now going in and looting his palace. Uh, with this war chest. Mm. Um, so I kind of like that vibe. It's like, don't betray or don't sort of come across as betraying the, the emperor, even though he wasn't the emperor at the time. He was still the chancellor. Um, because he hadn't yet revealed himself. He was held hostage on mm-hmm. Dooku's warship above Corsarant. So, um, yeah, I kind of, I like that notion that they then just, completely destroyed his legacy yeah. uh, by taking everything and uh bombing the hell out of his palace and his his capital city of yeah. uh Serrano. Uh, there's also mm-hmm. Hunter the other aspect of this I liked is you know Hunter really is not happy about doing this mission mm. um because he wants to stay off the the empire's radar and um, and interestingly with the pirate fee, there's obviously some additional intel that they're looking for, which we don't know what that's about just yet, but uh, the Bad Batch here have to come through on this, their next mission, uh, before she is going to give it to them, because, uh, you know, the intel that she's going to provide is not for free. So this this is a critical mission in that sense for this piece of intel. Mm. Yeah. So yeah, I really enjoyed uh, all these elements coming together on mm. Sereno, sort of Hunter's apprehension, sort of the the final nail in the coffin, so to speak, for for Count Dooku, and yeah. um, and also the, this potential intrigue of what Fee um, has for them. Yeah, yeah, and and, and I, one of the things I'm really enjoying here is the little. Uh, edges and corners that are being filled in about Count Dooku at the moment. Um, one of the big strengths of the Clone Wars and why so many of us love the Clone Wars TV show was it added to the worst Star Wars movie and made the stories that were told in that into something that fitted into the universe and made some of the characters in there, some of our favorite characters. Um, we have, you know, Ahsoka Tano and, uh, and uh, Anakin Skywalker himself and Obi-Wan Kenobi there uh, relationship all comes from what we saw in the Clone Wars and now with the Bad Batch and the recent shorts that were done, the animated shorts that were done, we're now finding out much more about Count Dooku and what his legacy was. Um, he was a great character played by Christopher Lee, but wasn't really filled in very much in, in the movies that he was in. It was very uh, much in the background. So this is something that I think the Bad Batch could really jump off of and start filling in more about him he was very central to the clone wars so having his legacy uh dealt with in in the show i think is a great choice me so no know what you mean <laughs> there is so better character no i <laughs> need um yeah that, I, that was jar jar binks for anybody that's not just a terrible yeah. version of kate dooku's accent no exactly <laughs> the, the, there is other characters that we really need more edges filled in on hmm. Like when they when they make Jar Jar Binks a proper like proper character, I'm gonna be happy. You know, but let's wait. You yes. know, I'm gonna say Clone Wars did a reasonably good job with Jar Jar. He wasn't as annoying in the Clone Wars TV. Show. No, it's not that he wasn't annoying. We actually want to like turn around that he was actually like a Sith Lord, ah, or yes, the, the, he, the, he was the one the pulling the strings the, yeah. above Palpatine. Yeah, like. It'd be great. Uh-huh. Uh, the greatest misdirection ever told. Yes. He, yes. Um, well, he is the one that agreed to the Emperor's plan, though. Um, basically, when yeah. He, when he stood in for uh, for uh, Queen Amidala. So. <laughs> well, yeah. that's it. They put someone totally and wholly unsuitable to mm-hmm. be in the Galactic Parliament. Or and, was and he? <laughs> that's the thing. <laughs> Isn't See? It? Exactly. Sith Lord he Jar-Jar. is yeah. the He is the MacGuffin, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Um, so for me, the, I, I'm very much with you. It, it was actually for me, it's the, it's the war crimes. It's the, the, the very adult aspects that are being filled, glossed over, but kind of just kind of sprinkled in. So on because of Dooku's kind of loss, mm-hmm. they bombarded the planet and the cities from space, mm-hmm. effectively wiping out not just him, uh, or his legacy, but his 
planet, mm-hmm. his 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 people, his servants, yeah. um, as a way to wipe. Now, a, ch- a younger audience member won't kind of start to see some of the problems and the deep parts of that. But when you start to get in, this is, again, the, the beginning of... They could start touching on this in the next season of Andor mm-hmm. or the, another show, one of the upcoming ones, where it's like, well, actually, yeah, there's all these people that were effectively mass genocided out of existence well, yeah. Yeah. Um, because of one lone dark Jedi. Um, I just, So I just find that that's the aspects I start to find really interesting. Mm-hmm. The war chest is cool. I was hoping like the one that they would go into would have riches and then like a lone holocron. Right. Um, that like yeah. it, it was going to be the beginning of more intrigue into Alpha and Omega and mm. all of that. I thought um, so too. I thought there was yeah. going to be some kind of artifact of some description there. Uh, Something Jedi. Yeah. Just because you need to have not that. Sorry. And now we know with Andor, you don't need the space magic all the time. Mm. You don't need any of that. It's just when it is with Omega here as a character, it does make some sense to start to kind of thread some of that through. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, we don't see that in this episode. So it's going to be interesting to see when they start sprinkling parts of that in. Um, but yeah, the, the overall, you're right. Everything about this is just fun up to the point of it all goes wrong, which it inevitably does in a lot of the Bad Batch's missions. Yeah, yeah. But they, 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 they get themselves they out of a lot of trouble, let's say. Yes. yes. Yeah, definitely. Uh, which kind of is our blaster point number three. Yes. Uh. <laughs> yes, our blaster point number three is the mission itself, the, the plan itself. You know, we get uh, get lots of these uh, throughout the Bad Batch season, so uh, so good to see the team working together. Um, they didn't really have as much of a plan as I thought they were going to have. No, because <laughs> um, it was it was kind of it started out as let's go to the planet and raid the war chest and get everything that we need. And then they see the containers are being taken away. And it's like, right, grab anything you can. <laughs> right. You go that way. I'll cause a distraction, says Hunter. And uh, then everything kind of falls apart. Yeah, it does. Yeah. I mean, I think the plan is, you know, they they land the other side of the mountain mm-hmm. ridge. It's kind of staying very much in the shadows. Yeah. But um, we have... Tech, Omega, and Echo caught on one of the cargo ships, mm-hmm. uh, whilst Hunter and Wrecker are still on the planet as this third and final massive cargo uh, spaceship uh, starts to take off. Yeah. But it seems like the, the the linchpin that wasn't there was when Wrecker takes out one of the stormtroopers. Yeah. Um, and I thought he'd know better than that. They're, yeah. Like they're all on patrol, and he just uh, knocks one out and drags him away, and everybody else is kind of going. They're going to notice that that guy's knocked out. That that is that is something that will be noticed. That's what happens when someone's on patrol, right? Um, but still, it's a fun, a fun little, uh, a fun little mission for the lot of them. Yeah, definitely. They do for this is the one I'm like. These are all clones as well. All you need to do is just pick up the mic and just <laughs> blah blah blah. Report in. Reporting in, sir. Oh, it's okay. There you go. <laughs> that, that's a good okay. point. That is a yeah, good point. All of them have the same voice. <laughs> They're slightly good. different inflections, but yeah. I'm pretty sure, like, yeah, Wrecker, if he wanted to, could put up. Well, not Wrecker, maybe, but Echo could put on. A, a, a standard tro- trooper voice, mm-hmm. the, the OG. But that's it. I mean, even if they had, you know, a wardrobe with the white clone trooper uh, outfit, mm. so they could go in disguise, at yeah. least Echo and uh, Hunter, uh, yeah. and they could be the ones that, you know, are in, are hiding in plain sight. Yeah, yeah. See, maybe they've just used that plan too much. They just wanted to go in all guns blazing this time. <laughs> let's uh, let's make things like we'll crank up the difficulty level yeah, of this operation. Exactly, you know? exactly. You've done that when you played a play, played a computer yeah. game. Uh, you, you've done that. Gone. Uh, I could do this stealthily, but <laughs> I'll, I'll cause an explosion. I'll not get a guy over here. Uh, but uh, but what we do see uh, within this is um, while. Uh, Omega Tech and Echo are trapped. We do see, as Chris mentioned, the lessons that Omega has been doing 
uh, do come back into play. She's the one that realizes that there are ways out of this uh, container ship. Uh, but firstly, uh, you can either get on the escape pods and get off there, but they jettison the escape pods pretty quickly, so they can't uh, they can't use those. And then she realizes that the container um, can, if dropped from the air, uh, does have its own re-entry boosters, uh, which will save the container from crashing to the ground. Um, so she's, she's the one that suggests that, coming from the lessons that she's been learning. So, yeah, and yeah, I actually thought that the lead clone trooper here, I thought was very smart um, mm-hmm. in the sense of them ejecting all the escape pods so that the three couldn't escape. They, you know, they knew that there were... Um, they were on board. So mm-hmm. I kind of thought that was pretty, uh, pretty smart of the clone trooper, um, yeah. or, or the pilot just to eject all the escape pods, mm-hmm. um, and bringing Omega to this alternative approach of how, um, they can get, uh, themselves off this cargo ship, uh, with in the cargo container. Mm-hmm. So good escape plan. Absolutely. Uh, you know, yeah. lateral thinking from Omega as well. Good job. And yes. <laughs> Uh, showing that staying in school, kids, is the right thing to do. <laughs> Don't do drugs and stay in school. <laughs> Absolutely. But do run off with your five weird uncles. <laughs> They're not that weird. And learn <laughs> weapons. Yes. <laughs> Lots of weapons. <laughs> also good lessons, yes. Yes. Um, yeah, no, look, again, this is for me just kind of starting to show it's going to be the fun part of Omega in the future, which is she's learning the best and worst of each of the characters and mm-hmm. kind of becoming that plus whatever she is herself. Exactly. Um, so we'll start, I start to see, I'm assuming or I'm hoping more and more so throughout this season, because we've got a lot of episodes this season, mm-hmm. her maybe starting to kind of form, formulate her own plans, that type of thing. Like she at the moment, she's just kind of, she's still making mistakes, but. <laughs> In a, in a useful way. Yeah. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. Uh, I'm, I'm interested to see how kind of it, it kind of continues because we end this episode with them plummeting to earth. Mm-hmm. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. you're like, oh, thank God this is a two parter. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. We get to see the resolution to that in the next episode. But yeah, I, I kind of like the, uh, I kind of like the idea that it's, that it's, uh, her recommendation that they do this they follow along with the plan and yes uh, by the end of the episode the re-entry uh, engines haven't fired uh, so nice little moment there one of the things i always like about the bad batch and what we enjoyed what i enjoyed in last season as well happens here i like the kind of break-offs of the groups different members of the bad batch working together because i don't know what it is but i like hunter and wrecker specifically together i think because wrecker is someone that is uh that is so able for the fight, so willing to blow things yeah. up and destroy things. And Hunter is the really technically minded leader. Having the two of them side by side, you're not sure whether Hunter really likes giving orders to Wrecker, and you're not really sure whether Wrecker <laughs> likes taking orders, or whether Wrecker will follow through well, on the exactly. orders yeah. of Hunter. Yeah, um, but, but yeah. I do like the two of them together. They're very distinct characters. So I like I like having the two of them together, and then uh, and Echo and Tech and, and Omega um, seem very different. You know, uh, Wrecker is very protective of Omega, and Hunter is very protective. He's, he's much more the the actual father and the rest of them are the uncles. So having her with her other two uncles uh, is a, is a nice split of the of the group as well. I like that, yeah. I like that. Uh, any other notes on the episode that we haven't talked about, guys? Uh, none from me. Nothing from me. Only thing I wanted to point out: we do have uh, the new uh, member of the cast being added this season with uh, with Fee, uh, the pirate, uh, being played by Wanda Sykes, American yes. comedian Wanda Sykes. Uh, very recognisable voice uh, when you hear yes. her on there. So uh, so it was kind of kind of cool to have her in there. I wonder how often we're going to see um, Fee hanging around in Ord Mantel. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, a lot. Mm. Come on. You don't get Wanda Sykes for just that. <laughs> no, 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 no. As John mentioned, she does have uh, have a future plan and has come with some intel. So I'm sure we're going to see her uh, later on in the season. But um, we were quite surprised when Sid appeared in almost every episode last season, um, played by Ray Perlman. Um So I wonder, will it be the same? Will we see Fee? Uh, hanging around, giving the Bad Batch missions uh, as well as Sid, or will she take over Sid's role, maybe, in yeah. this season? You that could know. be it. We could lose Sid yeah. and now have a new fee. Yeah. yeah. Actually, interestingly, uh, kind of one of my notes, uh, which is, they, they have that conversation where effectively Sid says, you know, once they arrive, that is the um, the clones, mm-hmm. um, the operations are over. 
like she will have to shut down. That's so right, it, yeah. it's kind of like, um, you know, there are still because of where it is between, you know, the, the Republic and the Empire, mm-hmm. it, it, these autonomous worlds are still very much there, yeah. but there is this real, um, this real kind of danger of the, the, the Empire, the clones mm-hmm. coming in and the, you know, these operations that Sid is getting the Bad Batch Guard will, will be crushed yeah. because of the, the massive kind of oversight that they bring once they occupy these worlds. Yeah. So I thought that was a really interesting point, you yeah. know, this, yeah. this notion of the Empire closing in. Absolutely. Um, uh, still sort of feeding out into um the the galaxy absolutely and i, I really like the discussion with her about freedom the, what what is freedom um to to the bad batch they so they're able, they have their ship and they're able to go anywhere in the galaxy but they're not really free um she's telling them that this is the kind of score where they need to do a big job get the score be able to be free and do what they want to do because um, they're not going to be able to do that very soon, uh, as you mentioned. If they if they uh, if they wait too long, they may not be able to get free. So uh, I thought that was a that was an interesting discussion as well, uh, and also that conversation that was there between Hunter and uh, and Echo, where um, Hunter's really concerned about the fact that they've pulled Omega into a fighting team, effectively, who are going on these missions, and uh, and Echo's kind of going, but you know, we we saved her. It was the right thing to do, but there's so many more people that we should be saving in the galaxy. This is our life now, and we should be working together to to save people. So uh, we kind of wondered, would they pivot from that role last season where they were going out in missions to go and steal things, and would they pivot to become helpers uh, of people across the galaxy? And it seems like that's getting more and more needed as the Empire grows in power. So uh, so I like those little touches in the background conversations as well in a fun episode uh, filled with lots of action. So, yeah. yeah, it's cool. Uh, overall, uh, do you guys have a rating for this episode? John, you normally give a rating for yeah. these, don't you? I give it three and a half scrumptious crab fests out of five. <laughs> Another benefit of uh, completing the mission mm. is it was a crab party all the way back at Sid's. Oh, I um, love crab. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I just thought this was, I, I thought it was just a good opener. Mm. It was with the mission on the crab world, then with the, the mission on Dooku's. Uh, planet of sereno mm-hmm. uh just really good all these little snippets of you know the notion of the empire closing in as well seeing you know omega having sort of taken on board tex i you know notion of swatting up uh on mm-hmm. the info but also seeing her being pretty uh, proficient in the combat setting yeah. on the crab planet as well um and i like this kind of um this reluctance of hunter to engage in missions that are involving the empire yep. uh, to keep uh, the the bad batch off the radar mm-hmm. of the empire that is closing in yep. as well so um yeah really really uh enjoyed this first episode uh off the bat yeah it's good to be back with the bad batch isn't it yeah definitely yeah. can't wait to start, start episode two any final words chris on this episode no, just very much want to see how the batch are going to get out of this one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it would be terrible yeah. if they uh, if three of them were killed in a, a, a container <laughs> crashing it. to the ground in the next episode. What there an you awful go, and it's like yeah. boom, done. No, that's it. Surprise! <laughs> yes, the bad they, they, this is season two. The bad splash. I like it, John. I like it. Uh, thanks so much for joining us for our discussion of the first episode of the Bad Batch season two. We'll be back with the second episode later today. Ruins of War. Indeed, Mm -hmm. yes. Thank you so much, fellow Batchers, for joining us. It is a pleasure, as always. Mm -hmm. Yes, and if you enjoyed what you heard, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, all the usual things. Head on over to tvpodcastindustries.com where you can find all the links where necessary. Make sure you share the podcast because sharing the podcast is what, gentlemen? Sharing the love. Yes. Happy New Year. We'll talk to you again next time. All right, bye. Yep. Bye, fellow Batchers. Remember, keep watching, keep listening, and keep being bad. Bye.